So, we have discussed how to paint the tubes with Richard's cocktails. The next recipe Rivers actively used, which leads to a good result, is acrylic prime paint. It is also called soil sometimes, plus colorant. The tubes soak the mixture, which makes them more flexible and easier to be with. This method is more expensive because one has to buy the prime paint, but if you perform someone's order and include the cost in the price of a future article, it is worth trying. Because this way you get quite qualitative tubes. So, Richard's cocktail is the first method we've discussed, prime paint with colorant is the second possible method, the third method is mordant. Based on my own experience and on the choice of materials on sale, I use this type of mordant of different colors. Redwood, walnut, black, dark oak, cherry tree, mountain ash, light oak. The first good thing about this kind of mordant is that it is not too smelly. It is alcohol water based, so the smell is quite bearable. As for the proportions for the second recipe, prime paint plus colorant, half a liter of acrylic primer and two spoons of colorant. You don't have to add varnish in this case. As well, I am often asked about the richness of color. It depends on the type of colorant. Yesterday I was painting the tubes using this method. I bought primer especially for this purpose. Two spoons of the colorant violet, produced by the company Polish, has given the color like this. And the next recipe, two spoons of this colorant and half a liter of ac acrylic primer. I have got the result like this. In this case, which is still mystery for me, when I was painting the tubes with black colorant of the same production, I used to get stripes, white stripes, while this time they are almost unnoticeable. Maybe the lines of product were different, I'm not sure. You have to try and experiment and achieve the required effect. Or maybe the black colorant I painted with was too old. You can often get such stripes as a result, but this time they are almost unseen. I like paintings that use with these kinds of mordant, they make the colors rich. When I need a dark color, I usually use mordant. Firstly, because it paints over thoroughly, and secondly, because it gives such rich colors. For the first time, I have learned how to select colors from Tanya Pavlovna and I have made such a palette for myself. Look, it is black, this one is oak, teak, I have undersigned the samples mahogany, chestnut tree, walnut and redwood. I keep this palette and follow it when I need to select the color. It is what concerns rich colors. If I need a tender, lighter color, in this case I mix the mordant with water. The mordant is alcoholic water-based, it mixes with water very well, and this way I get lighter tints of color. I have worked with the mordant redwood, and have got such colors. Here I have used a quarter of a bottle for half a liter of water, but here I have added very little of mordant to lots of water. When I use much water, I add a spoon of acrylic varnish lately. For the tubes not to unroll, to dry out faster and to be more flexible, because mordant makes the tubes breakable.
Maybe it is alcohol that ruins the structure of paper. That is why I use varnish to get rid of this effect. I would recommend the same when you use colorants for eggs. You make the paint the way it is written on the pack. If I'm not mistaken, you have to add to mixture a spoon of vinegar to avoid the colorant paint on your finger while weaving. And when the paint is ready, you add a spoon of varnish to make the tubes flexible. So, let's sum up. These are the recipes I mostly use today. Rich's cocktails, primer with colorant, pure mordant, mordant mixed with water plus a spoon of varnish, colorants for yeast eggs with water and a spoon of varnish. As for advantages and disadvantages, we have discussed them as well. Mordant paints over thoroughly without any white stripes. The white tips have to be cut. And before I finish, a couple of words about acrylic varnish. For all the time I have been using it, the best varnish I found for today is this one. It is what I found in the nearest construction store, produced by IRCOM, Panel Glossy Varnish. It is the best I have found for today. But still I don't stop experimenting. This one, Aqua Lacquer, is the cheapest, produced by Rolex. It is very cheap, but what I don't like about it is that it makes the article sticky sometimes. So I decided to try others, more expensive products. Here is the one produced by the company Composite, if I'm not mistaken, it is Ukrainian as well. This lacquer doesn't work perfect uh, on some articles. I believe it may also depend on the type of colorant I use, or maybe type of school glue. On some articles it forms up. I was going to give it up, but when I had no other varnish but this one, and I've tried covering different articles with it, it was not forming anymore. So there is no perfect varnish. Different types of lacquer covers different materials differently. As well, I've decided to try this one. It is not glossy, but rather dull. It is not bad as well. It is of completely different structure. It is thicker, so I mix it with water. The articles come out strong and not too shiny. Sometimes you need this very effect of a more natural look. So in this case, I use this kind of varnish. But anyway, from all my experiments, both expensive and cheaper ones, I like this varnish produced by Ircom most of all. Next time I'm going to buy this one. It is what concerns varnish. As for white paint, I'm currently using it, here it is, enamel for radiators. I use it very seldom, only if I need to paint in something in decoupage. For painting the tubes I don't use it. So, these were my pieces of advice on painting for today. Good luck to all of you!